Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, there's nothing more powerful. There's nothing greater. There's nothing stronger than the name of Jesus Christ. And at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Of things in heaven and things under heaven. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in trouble? Ever had a situation in your life? I remember one time I was driving in Tennessee. I was in a Ford minivan. You know, that's a go-getter, right? It's in a Ford minivan. Powerful engine. And we was going through the mountains. And this semi had decided to get over. The only problem is, I was the over. And I was up against the guardrail. And all I could say was Jesus. And I don't know what happened, but something happened. And my Ford Windstar van, it took off like a freight train. And we was able to get in front of that semi. I'm thankful for the name of Jesus today. I'm thankful for Brother and Sister Romine. I'm thankful for Arnold. You know, Brother Romine has a ministry of healing and stability. And when we first came here, that's what we needed. And we're still, that's still what we need, but you know, I'm glad we're here. I can look back over my life and I can see handprints on my life. Brother Ramon used to be my youth leader when I was young, even and all and all kinds of stuff. And we put up with a lot of it. When I came back to Indiana, he's still there putting up with a lot of me. Thank you for the reminders today. Thank you for this church. I appreciate getting to be with my family. I appreciate the chance to dedicate my granddaughter. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to minister as, as it is, but try to do it without your family. And it's really hard. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the Spirit of God that I feel in this house today. That's right. I feel a very prophetic unction in the Holy Ghost. And if you just work with me a little while, God's going to move in this house. And some things can change in your life. I'm not going to give it to very long. I feel the growing power of God in the house today. And if you've never made your calling and election sure, I want you to know that today could be your day. God wants to be the miraculous here. He wants to change your life. If you have your Bibles and wouldn't mind changing to the book of Matthew, chapter number 11. We're going to read verses 20 through 28 through 30. Church, you're going to hear people clap their hands. 
You know, when I played football in high school, I'm, I ain't trying to keep you a stand, I promise, but I'm just going to explain something. I feel like i got to explain something. When I played football in high school or basketball, when we would score a point or when we would make a big defensive stop, the crowd would start clapping. All because we kept the other team from scoring. Or all because we scored. Some people would even get so excited they would stand to their feet. Some would even jump up and throw their hands in the air. And that's over a ball. Going through a hoop. But today, again, you're in an apostolic, you're in a one God, tongue talking apostolic church. Where people have been saved from sin. Where people have been delivered from drugs. Where people have been delivered from alcohol. All kinds of wickedness, all kinds of sin. But today we're free because we've been delivered. We came. We found that at, at an apostolic church. Right, right. So when you hear people shout, just understand you're hearing somebody shout that used to be bound. You're hearing somebody clap that used to be bound by sin. You're hearing somebody worship that used to be lost to the sin, but God's coming out from along and picked him up and begin to turn them around and set their feet on solid ground. God somehow began to put somebody's life back together. And that's the reason we shout. That's the reason we get excited in this place. It's not because of what we are, but because of what God did for us. I want to talk to you today about heaven's exchange. Brother Roman, could you pray? Oh, Lord, I pray for the anointing of your word, Lord, that it would move upon our hearts and minds. Lord, open our hearts that we would hear and understand and heed your call and will and way. Bless this service. Anoint your lips of clay. In Jesus' name I pray. By the way, you're going to get to see my handshake a little bit. It's just because I got a little bit of a tremor in my hand. So when you see that going mess, don't worry about it. It just happens. All right? So here we go. All right. Transactions or exchanges are a part of everyday life. Transactions can be as large as the purchase of a home or as simple as an agreement between a parent and a child. For example, our little eight-year-old boy, Lane, every single day, there he goes, stand up. <laughs> every day, Lane will come up to us and say, Mommy or Daddy, if I get all my chores done, and if I get all my responsibilities done, can I then go outside and play with Reed? And we say, okay, if you get all your chores done and all your responsibilities done, you can go play with Reed. But for some reason, in the middle of his list, the calculation of going outside and playing is way out of his favor. It just doesn't add up right. The math doesn't equal out. So he begins to come up and try to make a new agreement with us. Mommy, can I wait and make my bed? Can I go play now and make my bed later? Mommy, can I go play now and pray later? Daddy, can I go play now and maybe read my Bible later? Because it's about to get dark, and I've waited all day long to do my chores. And I've procrastinated all day long. But for some reason, the agreement or the exchange isn't good enough for him anymore. We have even developed laws to describe a bad transaction. For example, when we buy a bad car, what do we call it? A lemon. Thus we refer to what? The lemon law. Right? Because the, the law says now that if you buy a bad car within so many days and there's so much wrong with it, you can begin to return it. We even have a term for when we buy something but we regret it later. What's that called? Buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse. How many of us? Talking about objects, not people. How many of us? <laughs> How many of us have went to the store and bought something, $25 on clearance, and it breaks as soon as we get home? And we begin to regret that purchase. How often have we woke up the next morning only to regret the purchase or decision we made just 25, four hours prior? 
Not to mention all the scans and the con artists. How many people received a call this week about their card extended warranty? I get calls from India. I don't know anybody in India. But the iPhone that I have, it will say India. And now I know that I don't know them, so I just don't answer. <laughs> but there are so many scams and so many con artists out there as well. As if finding something we like isn't hard enough. And most of the time it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. And it's no secret that the cost of living is soaring. Right. And that the dollar doesn't go nearly as far as it used to. Right. And while everyone is still looking for a good deal. Right. But today I want to tell you about another kind of transaction. All right. It's a heavenly transaction. All right. An exchange where God himself says, if you will do this, then I will give you this. If you will just show up. In other words, all you have to really do is just get here. And if you can just get here, then God will meet you there. But all you have to do, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All you really have to do is just show up. If you can just get here, then God will begin to walk beside you in your place of living. If you can just begin to get to the place where God can talk to you, God will be with you and God will begin to walk with you and God will begin to help you. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Jesus. You know, I'm glad you're here today. I really am. I didn't know some of y'all were coming. But I just felt in the Holy Ghost that when you're at your wit's end, you feel like there's no use going on. You feel like there's no use in even trying. No use in even going forward another day. You've tried all you know to do. You've done everything you know to do. And nothing is working out for you. My friend, I want you to know today that all you really have to do is just show up. I want you to know you're not a failure. And you're not a reject, and life is still worth living for you. All you have to do is just show up. Because God is going to meet you at your place in the valley. God is going to walk with you in your valley. He is going to walk with you in your trouble. I want you to know today that he's a bridge over troubled waters. He's a, he, he's a sick man healer. He's a heart fixer. Can I tell you today that you're not here by accident? But it is in fact by divine design because God still has a plan for your life. I want you to understand something today that God, in spite of all your mishaps and all your shortcomings and all, of, all the dirt that you've done in your past, God still has a plan for your life. He still wants to call you his own. He wants to pull you in your hand. And I just want you to know today that all those things all those books that have been holding you down to let you go today and the power of the name of Jesus Christ. For the Holy Ghost in this place. God wants to change somebody's future. There is nothing more powerful than a sin wrecked soul coming to an altar. Crying out to God. And God making that black heart. Making it white as snow. Then going down in the water in Jesus' name. Having their sins remitted. Having their sins washed away. But all I want you to come up and say, I'm free. I'm free. Thank God, I'm free. I can hear the Master saying today, Then have I got a deal for you? Have I got a deal for you? He can take all your heartache. He can take all of your pain. He can take all of your hurt. In exchange, he can give you rest. Yes. How many need rest in this house today? Yes. Come on, how many really need some rest in this place? Yes. Hallelujah. I tell you today that only Jesus can take a life ravaged by sin. A life that is ruined by sin. A life where you... Only Jesus. 
can get you out of your situation. You've done everything you know to do. You've tried everything you know to try. But the one thing you haven't done is come to an altar. Yes. Come on. All right. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The one thing you haven't done, you may have tried self-help groups. You may have tried AA. You may have went to this place and to that place. But the one thing you haven't done is come to an altar. And if you would just come to an altar, then God will begin to make a way for your life. Only Jesus can bring the family back together. Only Jesus can fix a life that's so broken, a life that's so damaged, and a life that's so tattered. Only Jesus can begin to pick up those pieces and begin to put that life back together. In fact, he's never seen a break that he can't heal. He's never seen a life that he can't touch. He's never seen an addiction that he can't break. He's never seen a sickness that he can't heal. He's never seen a life go so far that he can't reach down and touch it. In fact, the psalmist said, if I made my bed in hell, he would be there. If I flew to the uttermost parts of the earth, I would find his presence. You know why? Because his goodness is running after you. You cannot outrun the goodness of God. You cannot outrun the mercy of God. You cannot outrun the grace of God. And to me, if you are listening to the you will hear the master as he begins to call your name. I rebuke the guilt that's coming against your mind right now. I rebuke the guilt from all the times you felt you came up short. All the things you felt like you should be able to get over but can. I rebuke that guilt in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. I want you to understand something. You're not a failure. You're just, you're just a testimony in training. You're just a testimony in training today. And I tell you, I'm going to show you that God is in this place. And he is going to start putting things back together in your life. Yes, hallelujah. And for the ancient of days in this house. Amen. I'll never forget. I'll never forget I was in Tennessee preaching. And I, I didn't have a message. I, I just very honest, I didn't have a message. I didn't have a message this morning. Until I woke up. But I didn't know that there would be a backslider come to church that night. I began preaching on the prodigal son. I didn't know that this backsider was homeless. And I didn't know that this backsider didn't have a car. Didn't know he didn't have a job. Right. And I began preaching on the prodigal son. And I began to make a statement for, from just out of nowhere. I said, I promise you within 30 days, if you will give your heart to God, God will give you a house, he'll give you a car, and he'll give you a job. That man came to the altar that night. He sat right about here. He slobbered everywhere, cried everywhere. That night he gave his heart back to God. You know what happened? He called the very next day and said, I got a job. He called that pastor three days later and he said, I got a place to stay. He called that pastor within a week and he said, I got a car. Because God wanted to give some things back to him because he was able to lay all those burdens down. And I'm here to tell you today that God wants to do miracles in your life. You haven't seen the places that God will take you. If you will give your heart to God. If you haven't seen the thing that God will do for you, if you will just give your heart to God. Amen. You want to see things change quick in your life? Try repentance. You want to see things change quick in your life? Try Jesus. Try giving your heart to God. Try forsaking the world. Trying to walk away from everything and just start praying to Jesus. Amen. I put the same power in this house today. The same power is present to restore. The same power is present to heal. Amen. The same power is present to save. I don't know the intricate details of your life, but I know a man who does. And that man will move in your life. He will heal the wounds of your past. He will heal the wounds of your childhood. He will touch your mind. He will touch your heart. And he will touch your soul. And he will set you free. There's never been a need that God can't supply. There's never been a sickness that God can't heal. There's never been a situation that God can't touch. There's never been a boy that he couldn't make a man. There's never been a girl that he couldn't make a woman. There's never been a, There's never been a family so broken that God couldn't put them back together.
There's never been a sinner that he can't save. For the Bible declares that if any man is baptized into Christ, he's a new creature. Right. Old things are passed away. Yeah. And behold, all things are made, made new. Right. And I'm telling you right now, when you go down in the water, yes. in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus. there are some things lost in the water. Right. You might be a drug addict for 20 years, but I want to tell you that addiction is lost in the water. Yeah. Heroin is lost in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Is lost in the water. Yeah. Perversion is lost Lost in, age is lost in the water. Sin is lost. If the water could drop today. I'll never forget. Yokes are destroyed in water baptism. I'll never forget that I was at a tip revival. They asked me to lead service. And if you ever heard me sing, you would think it was a service for the hearing impaired. I'm good at it. I'm a good singer. Brother Aaron, you better watch that light. I got some bias. So I was leading worship service, right? In the middle of the service, I turn around and I see a woman walking up the street up the hill. And the Holy Ghost hit me. I looked at her and I said, ma'am, I've never seen you before in my life, but God said if you will come in here and give your heart to God, you're walking today, but you're going to be driving tomorrow. Amen. That woman came to church that night. She got baptized in Jesus' name. She called that pastor the next day, and she said, you know what? Someone just gave me a car. Amen. You cannot make this stuff up, folks. I'm telling you today that whatever the lack is in your life, God can make it up in an instant. God, I feel the Holy Ghost down. I don't know if you believe what I'm saying. If you will give your heart to God, God will fill the void in your life. That loneliness that you're dealing with, God will touch that loneliness. The hurt that you're dealing with, God will take that hurt and give you peace of mind. She was a woman, her testimony was this. She said, when I walk outside my front door, the two house, the, the, the house on my, my left and the house on my right, and the three houses across the street, all of them sell crack. She said, every time I go out my front door and sit on my porch, they're all me crack. She said, but you know what? Them crack dealers don't have a hold on me no more because I've been delivered. I want you to know today that no matter what you're seeing, no matter what your hang up is in life, God can deliver you. Yes. It is easier, it's just as easy for God to deliver you as he says that there be light. Yes. It is just as easy for God to deliver you from sin as it is for God to touch your life and heal you of cancer. Yes. There is no equal with God. There is no, there, there's not one thing that's harder to do than another when it comes to God. Because all he has to do is begin to speak the word. Understand today that being baptized in the name of Jesus will erase a sin from off your record. It's like the biggest do-over in the history of earth. Every one of us have a record in heaven. Every one of us do. And the only way to clear that record is to get baptized in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says it's for the remission of your sins. In other words, it will erase. 33 years of sin can be erased. 95 years of sin can be erased. All you have to do is make a commitment to go down in water today. And God will wash your sins away. I want to tell you, I've done some stuff in my life. You know, I, I have. The shame to admit it, but I have. I've done a few things in my life. But you know, Repentance was the best thing I ever did. But there was one thing better than repentance. You know what that was? Being baptized in Jesus' name. You know why? Because when I was baptized in Jesus' name, all that sin that was on my life, all that, all those things that was just holding me back, those things that I just couldn't get rid of, it was like just a big old wave. I just walked around everywhere I went. Everywhere I went, there was a way. And there was some place that was so heavy I couldn't even get up. I couldn't even go, you know why? 
Because that weight was following me. Right. Oh, that weight was on my life. Uh-huh. Couldn't do nothing about it. Couldn't go, couldn't go where I wanted to go. Right. Because of the weights that were on my life. But you know what happened? One day I went down in water. Oh, uh-huh. You think you're strong now? Wait till you go down in the water. Amen. Wait till you go down in the water. But you know, when I came up out of the water, you know what I realized? I realized there was one thing better than the water. You know what that was? That was the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost. I didn't know it until I went down in the water and came up. And they said, you could have the Holy Ghost. And you know what I did? I came to the altar. And my cousin Kelly, she is just, she's a gem, she's a peach. i never forget that night. She said, Robbie, shut up and talk in tongues. And that's how I got the Holy Ghost. And if you know my cousin Kelly, you know what I'm talking about. But when you go down in the water, you know what happens? Those things that have been holding on to you have to let go. That's right. You know why? Because you go down in the name of Jesus. Right. And the Bible says that the name of Jesus is more powerful yes. and stronger. Yes. You know the name of Jesus is almighty. You know that, right? Yes. So listen, what if, if something's almighty, it's either almighty or no mighty. There's no in between. It's not happening. It's either almighty or it's no mighty. I want you to know today that Jesus is the most powerful name in all the earth. And when you go down in the name of Jesus Christ, after you repent of your sins, you're going to come up a brand new creature. And all those years of sin is going to be washed away off your life. God wants to take your anxiety and he wants to give you peace. He wants to take your restless only hours and give you companionship. The Bible says that he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. The Bible says that he would give you beauty for ashes. Yes. So in other words, how many, let's just be real here right now, okay? How many have had things in their life that's consumed you? Right. Every minute they've consumed you. Right. Whoever didn't raise a hand, you're a liar. Right. I love you because you're lying. We've all had things in our life that's consumed us. Right. That's consumed our minds. That's consumed our that's consumed years yes. off of our life. Right. Jesus. Can I just talk to somebody today? Yes. Jesus. The depression that you're dealing with. God can heal you of that depression. That's right. Yes. The pain in your mind that drives you crazy. God can heal you of that pain. The feelings of loss that you have. God can heal you of that feeling of loss. God wants to begin to replace some things in your life today. God wants to begin to mend some things in your life today. He said he would give you beauty for ashes. You know what that means? You can't dig through the ashes without getting the black marks of life on you, right? Those things have to be washed off. Those, can we all stand? Those things have to be washed away from your lives. He said he would give you beauty for ashes. He said to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You can't grow in depression. You can't grow right when you're depressed. You can't grow right when you're in mourning. You can't grow right when you're disheartened. But I just feel like right now, can we all just close our eyes right now? God wants to begin to restore some things in your life. And I promise you right now, if you will give your heart to God, your future will be so different than the life you've lived up to this point. This might be my only chance. 
Sir, I want you to know right now, you're thinking about it. Right now, you're thinking, should I try it? I want to tell you, yes. You can try it. It's safe. Can we all gather around the altar, please?